James second chapter 14 to 26 but uh, today and the evening will be generally about faith and deeds and the uh, role of uh, faith and deeds in salvation this is a debate among many many christians as to uh, you know uh, just is faith alone enough simply believing in jesus is that enough for, for salvation what about works and some people say oh you must do works and they even think that uh, through works they can achieve salvation uh, which is basically a belief in uh, in india for many years uh, that through karma or works you can attain salvation attain but as we know that salvation is a gift of god and it's by faith we receive that gift now very interestingly the word faith actually means uh, it's a noun uh, and the corresponding uh, a verb is believing faith actually means being sure of what you hope for and certain of what you do not believe or what you do not see be sure of what you hope for and certain of what you do not see hebrews 11:1 1. and uh, it's a noun faith having faith the corresponding uh, verb is believing in greek faith means pistis p i s t i s and believing is pisteo p a s t e o and this word believing has got a very strong meaning pisteo Yes, relying, trusting, putting a life in the hands of the Lord, and we are actually saved by faith. And I'm going to explain that today: the role of faith and deeds. Uh, now, there were questions put by the crowds to Jesus uh, in John chapter six, verses twenty-eight and twenty-nine. Listen very carefully; those words are very important. The question was, "What must we do to do the works God requires?" works deeds the word for deeds or works in greek is erga erga means deeds or works karma in in his in hindi and in sanskrit uh, good deeds being good good person helping people all that is fine there is a role for that in after receiving salvation but we can't get salvation by doing these things so the question came to jesus what must you do to do the works god requires he gave a simple answer verse 29 The work of God is this: to believe in the one He has sent. The question was, what work should I do? What deed should I do for salvation, which God requires for me? Answer was the work, which means believing itself is the primary work. It's a work. It's deeds of the heart and the mind. Believing in Jesus. The work of God is this. to believe in the one he has sent putting a life trust in his hands and in fact old testament says isaiah 64 chapter verse 6 all of our righteous acts are like filthy rags in the eyes of men we do a lot of, lot of good things to impress people sometimes and we think we're doing a service to god is basically sometimes for our own image to build up and all righteous acts are like filthy rags sometimes in fact bible says that and it's very very clear in the scriptures that we are saved not by works but by faith by grace in ephesians chapter 2 8 9 and 10 8 and 10 is written is by grace you've been saved through faith this is not from yourselves it's a gift of god not by works that no one can boast The grace of God is that He sent Christ to the world, John three sixteen. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him will not perish but have everlasting life. That's the work of God to send Christ to the world. And when we put our faith in Jesus, when we believe in Jesus, putting faith in Him means believing in Him. Faith is a noun. I told you, believing is a verb. When you put your faith in Jesus, then we are saved because in our heart we believe, we confess the mouth, and we are saved. Romans chapter ten, verse nine and ten says, "When you believe in a heart that Christ rose from the dead, and confess the mouth, Jesus Christ Lord, you are saved. You are saved. Past tense. Period. Done. For with a heart you believe and are justified." And you come to the mouth, and you are saved. 
heart you believe and you confess with the mouth and you are saved. So everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord is saved. Romans chapter 10 verse 30. And we are justified to go to heaven only because of faith in Jesus. Romans chapter 5 verse 1 says, when you be justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith in this grace in which we now stand. We stand on the grace of God, that's our hope, not our holiness, but His grace. And we are justified by faith in Jesus. Now, the word justification is also a word for righteousness. Righteousness actually means justification. Didaiko sinan in Greek, didaiko sinan, that is the meaning of uh, justification or righteousness. Now, we're all called to be, basically, because of belief in Christ, we are children of Abraham. Abraham is our father, the Bible says. And Abraham believed God and he reckoned to be righteous. He was credited righteousness. So by believing, we are made righteous. To go to heaven, we must be perfect, righteous, justified to go to heaven. This justification for us today is the Lord Jesus Christ. He is our righteousness. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30. Old Testament time, Abraham was righteous because he believed. He believed God. He was reckoned to be righteous, justified. And we find in his life, when God spoke, he believed. We read in the Bible about, uh, in the book of Genesis, the first time we read about, he believed God and he was reckoned to be righteous, is in Genesis 15, chapter 6. And there's a background to it. Background is, he had rescued uh, Lot from uh, the attack of the four kings, the king of Sodom. Lot was in Sodom. Kedar Laomer, Kedar Laomer was a king who took along with some other kings, attacked Sodom and uh, took the plunder away. And then Abraham, when he, when he heard that Sodom is under uh, fire and because Lot was there, he went and rescued Lot and in fact defeated the kings. Four kings aligned against king of Sodom. And uh, amazing, amazing is it? Well, God was with him. And then after the whole thing is over and he rescues a lot and Sodom, the king of Sodom is uh, very happy about that. He comes to Abraham and says, why don't you give me my men and I can keep all the plunder. All the plunder you took from the war, which you won the war, you can keep, but give me the men. And Abraham says, no, I am sworn to God, I will not take anything of that plunder except what my men have eaten what belongs to them, that's all. I will not take because then you can't say I made Abraham rich. It's found in the book of Genesis 14 chapter, the last the whole chapter in fact, the last few verses. If I take keep the plunder then you will say I made Abraham rich. Abraham trusted in God and he didn't take the plunder. Then God speaks to Abraham and says Genesis 15 chapter verse 1. Don't be afraid Abraham. I am your shield and your very great reward. I am your shield and your reward. And then Abraham says, reward? I have no children. I am childless. All, all my estate goes to Eliezer of Damascus, the servant. He is going to inherit all that I have. Eliezer was a servant of, from Damascus. He is going to inherit. What reward I am going to get? And God says, look up, look at the stars. You can, can you count the stars? Count the stars. I'm going to give you offspring like the stars in the universe. Look up. Here is a man, old man, about 100 years old, no child, children, and God said, I'm your reward. I'm your reward, he says. Abraham refused to take the plunder from the war because he didn't want King of Sodom to say, I made Abraham rich. He denied himself the plunder and God says, I am your shield, I am your reward. What reward, Lord? I am childless. All my sin goes to Eliezer. And God says, look up. 
I'll give you children, offspring, like the stars in the universe. In that context is written, Genesis 15, chapter 6, Abraham believed God and he was credited to be righteous. Reckoned to be righteous because he believed God. He put his trust in the Lord. And we are called to be like that. In fact, when he is called out of uh, uh, Ur of Chaldeans, when he, in hometown he was in Ur, and God told him, leave your country, your people, old land I will show you. Genesis 12 chapter, the first two verses. Again, when God told him, I will bless you and I will make your nation, uh, uh, name great and uh, leave your country, your people, your father's house, go to land I will show you. Abraham left. No questions asked. He believed God. Left his people, his country, his parents, father's household and left. Not knowing where he's going. That's faith. Faith is now believing is a verb. He believed God and he left. Same way God told him, I'll give star, like star the universe, I'll give children. He believed God, reckoned the righteous. In the same way, when we believe in Jesus, we are saved. We are reckoned to be righteous. Because he is our righteousness. Without righteousness, we can't go to heaven. How can we be justified to go to heaven? Righteousness means justification. We are justified to go to heaven because we have come to believe in Jesus. Even as Abraham believed, we are reckoned to be righteous. Now, we read in the Bible about how when uh, God told him we're going to have children in the universe. In the book of Romans, in chapter 4, from verse 18, we read, Against all hope, Abraham in hope believed. So, began father of many nations. So, instead of him, so shall your offspring be. Abraham believed. So shall your offspring be. Without weakening in his faith, he faced the fact his body was as good as dead. He was about 100 years old. And Sarah's womb also was dead. But he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God. He did not waver through unbelief. And gave glory to God, being fully persuaded that God had power to do what he had promised. And then he goes on to say that his offspring shall be like that. Abraham believed God, was reckoned to be righteous. Again, it's mentioned in Romans chapter 4, verse 23 and 24. We are his offspring. Just like when God spoke, he believed and by faith he was made righteous. Today, by faith in Christ, we are righteous. I told you about how when you call upon Jesus' name, we are saved and we can't justify ourselves. We are justified God only because we put our trust in Jesus. We are saved by faith. We are justified by faith and it is the grace of Having said that, after we receive this gift of salvation by faith, what thereafter? I want to go back to Ephesians chapter 2, 8, 9 and 10. It's by grace you've been saved through faith. This is not from yourself, it's a gift of God. Not by works that no one can boast. Then look at the next verse. For we are God's workmanship, created in Jesus Christ, to do good works, which God prepared advance for us to do. So after receiving this gift of salvation by faith, thereafter an outflow of that faith is doing good works. So our faith will result in good works. They both go together. You can't take one independent of the other. First faith. And because we have faith, that faith manifests in doing good works. Now in the book of James chapter 2 from verse 14, it talks about how when you have faith, they don't have uh, deeds. How can that faith save you? Second chapter of uh, uh, James, verse 14 now, tomorrow we will do that in detail, verse by verse we will do that. When you have faith and does not accompany but deeds, how can that faith save a person? Meaning, true faith manifests in deeds. The error that people get into is the thing that simply by deeds they can achieve salvation. Nobody can achieve salvation. 
The work of God is this, to believe in the one he has sent. So in fact, believing itself is a, is, a, is a work, is a deed. The primary work. Thereafter, when you put our faith in Jesus, it's a starting point of a new life. He called us, called us to a set-apart life. 2 Timothy 1.9 says, He saved us and called us to a holy life. That holy life includes doing things God wants us to do out of love for Him. So, faith manifests in good deeds. We are saved by faith, never by works. No one can boast and say, I've done good works, so I'm, I'm going to be uh, going to heaven. Nobody can go to heaven. How much of a good we are, we fall short of perfection. The question comes to me many times. First time it came to me was when I was Chandigarh for, for an outreach meeting. And uh, some other, from some other faith, some people were there. And they asked me a question. Brother, you were saying you, uh, people go to heaven when they believe in Jesus. And you are very convinced of that. I can make out your conviction. We don't question your faith and you are going to heaven. What about all the good people in the world? Where are they going? There are people who do very good works. Nice people, helpful people. And what about them? Where are they going to go? Before I could give the answer, one more question came. Are there not better people than you among different philosophies and religions? Are there not better people than you? Do much better works? I said, yes. There are many better people. Yet they find very comfortable. Are there are better people than you? I said, yeah. I'm sure. Then they are very encouraged by my answer. Then he had another question. Okay, you are going to heaven, you say, because you believe in Jesus. You put a faith in Jesus. You admit there are better people than you in the world. So are you saying you are going to go to heaven and better people than you are not going to heaven? So I had a simple answer for that. I told him, good people don't go to heaven. Only perfect people go to heaven. Only those justified by God go to heaven. Only perfect people. Not good people. And nobody is perfect. Yet anybody can be made perfect by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because Hebrews 10, 14 says, By one sacrifice, he has made perfect forever. Perfect forever. Those who are being made holy. Once and for be made perfect by the sacrifice of Christ. And that amazing grace of God, the wonderful grace of God, amazing grace, we cannot just imagine that. Sinful as we are, in spite of our sins, He cleanses of our sins, He loves us. Therefore, by putting His Spirit in our hearts as a deposit, guaranteeing inheritance, we are assurance of going to heaven. We have the hope of glory. That realization, that will the result in deeds, helping people. It's natural, it comes naturally. Because when you love God, you want to do His will. And if you love God, He'll tell us what we have to do. We do it and we do deeds, good deeds, works. So works actually follow salvation. So faith and works blend together. That's why in the book of James chapter 2 verse 14, James writes, if you say you have faith and you don't have deeds, how can such faith save him? So brother or sister says, I have no food, I have no clothing. They say, oh, I wish you well, be happy, I'm praying for you. Don't think about it. How can such faith save you? And it goes on to say in verse 17, that faith without deeds is dead. What's the meaning of dead in this word, in this context? The Greek word is nekra. N-E-K-R-A. Nekra means use, uh, it's been lifeless. Faith without deeds is lifeless. You can say you've got faith. With genuine faith, it will manifest in, in deeds, good deeds. So the writer of the James, I mean James who wrote this actually, writer, he says that you say you've got faith, someone may say, if you have faith, let me see it by the deeds. Show me your faith by your deeds. I will show my faith by the deeds that I do. 
and confident the fact that they really have faith in the Lord, it will result in your life being fruitful, doing good deeds, what God wants you to do. We are all called to do good deeds and we are called to bear fruit in the good deeds. So we, faith is manifest in good deeds. And uh, in the same passage of James, tomorrow we will do in detail, James talks about how someone will say, uh, you have faith, show me by, by the deeds and I will show my faith by what I do. And then he also gives the example of Abraham. Wasn't Abraham considered righteous by what he did? God told him to offer son Isaac as a sacrifice and willing to offer Isaac as a sacrifice. 11th chapter of Hebrews, 17 to 19. You're done. By faith, Abraham, when God tested him, offered Isaac as a sacrifice. He received the promises about the sacrifice of one and only son. Even though we've been told about him, through Isaac, the offspring will be reckoned. Abraham reasoned that God could raise the dead. He reasoned that even if he offered Isaac as a sacrifice, God would raise up Isaac from the dead. What an amazing faith. So his belief in Christ manifests in actual action. Faith without deeds is dead. If you don't do it at all, it'll, it'll, you know, the faith will die down. It's only a warning for Christians. So we really have faith in result, in actions. Can you imagine? God had told Abraham through Isaac, we'll have children like the Son universe in Genesis 15 chapter, the first few verses, which I quoted earlier. And because he believed God, he was reckoned to be righteous. Now the same God is saying, offer Isaac as a sacrifice, in fact, as a burnt offering. If you go to the book of Genesis, 22nd chapter, the whole story is there about Abraham willing to offer Isaac a sacrifice. He's supposed to offer Isaac as a burnt offering. The burnt offering means what? Burnt offering, if you look at Leviticus 6 chapter verse 9, the first 10 verses talks about burnt offering. The sacrifice has to be put on the altar. In fact, after uh, the, the sacrifice is killed, you know, Abraham took a knife actually to kill Isaac and then offer him on the altar and burn on the altar, burnt offering. Whole night it has to smolder on the altar. And then the morning, he'll pick up the ashes, burnt offering. That's burnt, burnt offering. God told him specifically, offer him as a burnt offering. Now you might wonder, see, the law was given through Moses 400 years after Abraham. How did Abraham know what about, about burnt offerings? When was Leviticus written? Leviticus, much later written. Leviticus. The law was given through Moses. 400 years later, how come Abraham knew about burnt offering then? Have you wondered about that? Interesting thing is, in the book of Genesis, 23rd chapter verse 5, or 26 chapter verse 5, 26 5, it says, Genesis 26 5, Abraham kept all the laws, statutes, commandments, and requirements of God. Abraham kept the commandments. Where were the commandments? In his heart. In his heart, God put the commandments. He kept the commandments. And God told him, burnt offering. He was willing to offer Isaac as a burnt offering. He got a reason, oh, God told me some time back, through Isaac, I'm going to have children in the universe. Now he's saying, sacrifice. How can I sacrifice? Maybe wrong, I'm hearing now. Different voice I'm hearing. He knew God is saying that. He's willing to offer Isaac as a sacrifice. So his faith and actions were working together. This is what James writes. Look at the second chapter of James, 14 to 26, talks about. Look at Abraham. He believed God, reckoned to be righteous. Verse 23, James 2 23. Same thing he mentioned. James 2 23. He believed God, reckoned to be righteous. That belief resulted in action. He was willing to offer Isaac a sacrifice. He reasoned that he put, offer Isaac a sacrifice. All that God told about him, about Isaac, through him, Abraham will have children like the stars in the universe. Abraham reasoned, God could raise Isaac from the dead. 
After one whole night of burnt offering, as a morning will be ashes. You know what Abraham believed? From the ashes, God raised up a new Isaac. That was his faith. It also answers one more question people ask me sometimes. Brother, uh, what about uh, uh, cremation? Uh, we bury the uh, uh, dead uh, Christians. Is cremation okay? They'll ask. In fact, in Amo 6.10, it says the Jews burned the bodies. I'm not ad ad advocating uh, cremation. But look at Abraham. He had to offer Isaac a sacrifice. He's willing to do it. He believed that next day morning, when he picks up the ashes of Isaac, a new Isaac will come from the ashes. There are many examples of people who died in air crashes. In those days, people died in the voyage from uh, West Coast to Africa and all that, in the ship the, the, uh, shipwrecked, and they died in the water, the oceans. Body went to water, sometimes goes to ashes, sometimes goes to dust. For God, nothing is impossible. You can raise from the dead, from ashes, from dust, and from water. But that apart, let's come back. Abraham believed that God could raise from the ashes a new Isaac. Faith. Faith and action going together. So don't leave out deeds. Deeds are important. In fact, our faith is complemented by deeds. They go together. That's why you look at the creator, the beautiful creator that Shruti had sent to all of us, which I had sent to everyone. It is a puzzle. The two things mesh together. Faith and deeds. We are saved by faith. But genuine faith Manifest in deeds. He says, show me a faith without deeds. That's what the James writes. Someone might say, show me a faith without deeds. I'll show my uh, faith by my deeds. If you have fair faith, show me through your deeds. Now the question comes, yes, we are saved by faith and therefore it results in deeds. The other extreme is, after becoming believers and as you grow older, suddenly you get so much caught up with deeds you focus on this thinking, this will save you. It happened in the churches in Galatia. The Galatian churches were insisting that the Gentile believers should be circumcised for the law of Moses and do things they are supposed to do. The Jews had to do before, the, before Christ came. The law was given to point people to Christ. Once the law was given to point people to Christ. Once Christ came, they required to believe in Jesus and thereby be saved. By faith, we are saved and a deed result because we have faith and we are saved. Now, what happened in Galatian churches? They are forcing the Gentile believers to obey the law of Moses and focus on deeds, emphasizing on deeds. Now, in the third chapter of Galatians, Paul is writing to them saying, Oh, you foolish Galatians. Third chapter of Galatians begins with, You foolish Galatians. Who has bewitched you? What a term to use. Who has bewitched you? Bewitched means you are under a spell. Who has bewitched you? And he goes on to say, Did you receive the Holy Spirit by observing the law or by believing what you heard? Did you receive the Holy Spirit by observing the law? or by believing what you heard. Before very eyes, Christ was put as crucified. Why was he crucified? For your salvation. Not by works. By faith in that work of Christ on the cross. You foolish people. Bewitched. You are bewitched people. What a dumb deal. Bewitched. Many Bibles say bewitched. And then, he says, before very eyes, he is put as one crucified. Having begun with the spirit, are you going on the flesh? Meaning, knowing you are saved by faith, knowing you are still spirit by faith, now you want to focus on deeds. How foolish you are, he says. Third verse, how foolish you are. How can you be so foolish? Did God give his spirit and work miracles among you? Because he observed the law or by believing what he heard. Observe the law or by believing what he heard. And there is believing what he heard. You believe. That's how we have the Holy Spirit. That's how we are saved. How can you be so foolish? How can you be bewitched? There's something else goes on to say in verse 10. Very, very powerful verse there is. Galatians chapter 3 verse 10. Those who rely on observing the law are under a curse. Those who rely 
on the law, on deeds alone, without faith, are cursed. Because anyone does not continue obeying the law is under a curse. Galatians chapter 3, verse 10 and 11. You're under a curse. If you don't continue obeying the law, you're under a curse. And therefore, we are saved by faith and faith results in deeds. And once you start doing deeds, don't focus on the deeds. Otherwise, you get you are foolish. You begin with the spirit, go on the flesh. That's what happened in Galatian churches. And the Apostle Paul addressed the issue. He goes on to say, the third chapter of, uh, fifth chapter of Galatians, in verse 6, Galatians 5, 6. Neither circumcision nor uncircumcision has any value. What matters is faith expressing itself through love. If genuine faith in Christ will manifest in love. This faith manifests in so many ways. So many ways. I'm going to talk some of them. Talk about some of them. Love. That's what matters. You're focusing on circumcision, physical circumcision you're focusing on is, is in fact chiding the church in Galatia. You foolish people. Are you so foolish? You're bewitched. You began the spirit, now go on in, uh, in the flesh. You believe because by faith you believed and then you had the spirit of God living in you. Now why, why do you want to go on in the flesh? And why are you focusing on circumcision? Neither circumcision or uncircumcision anybody. What matters is faith expressing itself through love. And it's because of love that we do good deeds. We help people do good deeds out of love for God. That's how it should be. Hebrews 6.10 says, Hebrews 6.10, God is not unjust. He will not forget your work. Erga, works, deeds. He won't forget your work. As you help his people and come to help them. Not forget your work and the love you have shown him. You won't forget your work and the love you've shown him as you help his people. Continue to help them. So because we love God, we do good deeds. Look at the connection, the beautiful connection. We have faith in Christ. What matters is faith expressing him through love. When you have love, you love God first. You love people. You serve people. You do good deeds for people out of love. Beautiful it is, isn't it? The flow, beautiful flow. Now again, we come back to uh, Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10 from verse 19, we read, it talks about drawing close to God, holding on to hope of God, and stirring each other up to love and good deeds. Love and good deeds. Look at the, the flow. First is Hebrews chapter 10, verse 19. Since we have confessed to enter the most holy place, by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way open for through the curtain, let's draw near to God. The curtain means the body, body of Christ. The body was broken, crucified, curtain tore. We all can approach the Father in heaven. Approach God through the blood of Christ. We draw close to God with a heart sprinkled to cleanse us from guilty conscience and also hold on to hope that we've got with his promise is faithful. And then he goes on to say, let's consider how we can stir up each other, spur each other to love and good deeds. So first of coming to Christ, coming to God, to the blood of Christ, holding on to the hope of God, not only doing good deeds, but stirring up each other for good deeds. Love and good deeds. I like the flow, love and good deeds. Good deeds come out of love. Now just good deeds alone will not take us anywhere. There are so many people who do good deeds. So many social workers are there. They do social work. They do help people. Humanists. What is humanism? Humanism is helping people. Good works. Without Christ, what's your use? You get a good name, yes. Some of the biggest donors in, in Mumbai are the smugglers. Those days itself. Some of the because philanthropists are people who made money in the wrong way. Very good name. Very helpful. Lot of social work. Lot of good deeds. But then, 
in the kingdom of God, his good deeds come from love and from faith. So it's important for us to understand how faith must manifest in the way we live. So love comes from faith. Again, directly is mentioned about works coming from faith. The Apostle Paul is commending the church in Thessalonica for three things. First Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 3. For the work produced by faith. Work, deeds, produced by faith. Labor of love and endurance inspired by hope. Work produced by faith. Labor of love and endurance inspired by hope. The outward expression is works, good deeds, works, laboring for the Lord, and endurance. What's the foundation? Faith, love, and hope. Is it familiar? Something rings a, rings a bell for you? First Corinthians 13 chapter, verse 13. Three things remain. Faith, hope, and love. The greatest is love. In fact, I told you about the Galatian churches. They were uh, rebuked by Paul in a way for beginning with the spirit going on in the flesh. And third chapter verse 6 is again going to the same verse about Abraham. He believed God and he reckoned to be righteous. He's quoting that again. To Romans, Paul quoted Romans 4.24 James 4.23 James quotes Nation 3.6, Paul quotes, Listen for us that we are righteous because we are justified to God only by faith like Abraham. But like Abraham's faith manifests in actually obeying God and acting upon his faith, you and me must act upon the faith we have and do the will of God. We are supposed to do the will of God. Not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, go to heaven. He does the will of God. Of course, we call upon his name, you are saved. Not just saying his name, calling upon his name. In Matthew 7, 21, Jesus says, not everyone calls upon, or not everyone says, Lord, I'll go to heaven. Not everyone says, Lord, Lord. The one who does the will of my father. Romans 10, 13 says, everyone who calls upon his name will be saved. Calling upon the name different from the saying. You know, demons say he's God. They believe also. Demons also believe. They shudder also. But they don't know the will of God. As God's people, because we have put our trust in Jesus, we find out his will and do his will, and our actions must reflect our faith. In 1 John chapter 3, 17, 18, John writes, 1 John, 3rd chapter, 17, 18, if anyone has material, material possessions and sees a brother in need, doesn't have any pity on him, how can the love of God be in him? Let's not just love in words and tongue, but in actions and in truth. The love should be manifest in actions. So faith, expression is love. Love expression love is actions, deeds. So it's a flow. And together we all complement and we are therefore, we are witnesses for Christ. Interestingly, in Acts chapter 1 verse 8, the Lord tells them to say in Jerusalem, you receive power of the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you'll be my witness. You'll be my witnesses. Being a witness is more than witnessing. Being a witness is a very existence, very being. Our existence itself reflects the gospel of Christ. So faith has to manifest in actions. Now let's go back to the church in Colossae. This church in Colossae was known for their faith in Christ and love for each other. Faith in Christ, love for each other. Look at the connection. True faith in Jesus will result in manifesting the love of God. And they were known for this faith and love. And Paul prayed for them. Colossians chapter 1, 9 onwards. Therefore, since we heard about you, we now stop praying for you. Asking God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through spiritual wisdom and understanding. We pray this that we live life worthy of God, living lives worthy of God, 
pleasing him in every way. Look at the next uh, quality. Bearing fruit in every good work. We're all called to good works and bear fruit in it. Growing in his knowledge and extended with all power across glorious might. Five amazing outflow of our knowing the will of God completely by the wisdom of God. So both go to very well together, faith and deeds. Don't focus only on deeds like the Galatians did. And uh, James writes to people who say, I've got faith, I don't need deeds. How can that faith save you? Faith without deeds is lifeless. In fact, James 2.26 it says, James 2.26, as the body without the spirit is dead, body without the spirit is lifeless. Similarly, faith without deeds is dead, lifeless, necra. And therefore, let's understand, we have to find out the will of God after we accept Christ, after we are saved, and go about doing His will by the strength He gives us, by the faith He gives us, and then you find you are a witness for Christ. People know who you are. They can recognize Christ in you by the way you live, the things you do, because it comes from a relationship with God. You know, as God's people, we are referred to as the bride of Christ. He is our bridegroom, we are the bride. The book of Revelation talks about the bride, the bridegroom coming for the bride. Given an analogy, when you go for a wedding, you ask people who is the bride. When you go for a wedding, wedding is going on. Or maybe the bride just comes in. You ask people who is the bride, you know who the bride is. You may not know the bride personally. The way the bride is dressed, you know she's the bride. So when you are living for Christ, your life will show. Because we are the people who are the workmanship of God. And again, going back to Ephesians 2.10, we are God's workmanship, created in Jesus Christ, to do good works. As you do good works, this workmanship of God will be made known to people, demonstrated by God to people. Isaiah 49 3, the Lord told the Israelites, Isaiah 49 3, you are my servant Israel, in whom I will display my splendor. About you and me, New Testament believers, there's a prophecy in Isaiah 61 3, they'll be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. And we are the workmanship of God, he works in us. For us to bear fruit in every good work, to do good deeds. So to summarize, faith and deeds go together. We are saved by faith only, but faith manifests in deeds. Genuine faith will result in a, a tangible, effective life that reflects God's nature. Therefore, we have to find out the will of God, each one of us. Do the will of God and encourage each other to do us love and good deeds. These are important. These don't qualify for salvation. Whereas faith qualifies and faith basically means deeds. In fact, faith itself is a deed. I told you, I began with that. John 6, 28, 29. What must you do the works God requires? Answer is work, not works. The work of God is this. You believe in the one he has said. Praise God for the amazing faith he's given us. Every one of us has faith. Thank God. It's a gift of God. But the faith has to be manifested in our lives, the way we live, and the way we go about helping people out of love for God.